Welcome to our AMCI testing YouTube channel. I'm George and here's Gary. And today we're going to talk about tires. Specifically, what comes as original equipment on your high-performance car. Mm -hmm. And we'll also throw in some nerdy racing bits. Definitely nerdy racing bits. What's going on? That's a great question. <laughs> Let's go take a look. Guy, what you doing? I'm trying to get you a real wheel and tire to talk about. Talk about nerdy, why don't you tell us about knockoffs? Knockoffs, well, this is a Jaguar knockoff. And many people don't know that knockoffs are oriented to turn different ways on different sides of the car. You can see this one has a undo marking with an error to the left, that's because we're on the left side of the car. And if it wasn't like that, as you were driving down the road, it might loosen, which is probably not a great idea. Well, I think we have some more modern tires to talk about. Guy. Please keep it down for a second, we'll go back to our chairs. All right, all right. <laughs> Speaking about uh, modern high performance tires, we have an excellent tire here, a Michelin Sport Cup 2. So Gary, why don't you tell us a little bit about this tire and some specific markings that you find on this tire? Yeah, that's, this is a great example because it has an OE marking on it. So the OE mean, meaning original equipment uh, manufacturer. So this has a TPC spec printed right on the sidewall. And that means that this tire has been tuned uh, by Michelin in conjunction with General Motors to make it work on the car this was intended for, which this happens to be a C7 Corvette tire. Uh, so that means that they've, they've changed, they've worked with Michelin to change the way this tire uh, handles, the way it, the rolling resistance, how much noise it makes, uh, the compound, the, the tools they use are the compounding on it. Uh, the belt package, they know what, what the belts are made of and how many of them there are. So they can change the stiffness of the sidewalls, the stiffness of the surface area of the tire. And obviously a C7 Corvette, they're after handling. Mm -hmm. So they want it to be responsive. They want the, the compound to be, probably be softer uh, to make it work better. Uh, it's a, and the G-figures you see in magazines for C7 Corvettes are off the off the you know <laughs> chart off the charts exactly so and the wear I can tell you from personal experience uh, is pretty high on this tire and we'll get into tread wear a little bit later uh, but so the it's been it's, it's been tuned like a shock absorber so that you know in other words you this is not something you just go in a store and buy a, a, a non TPC spec yeah. right because suit. as you were saying they have changed they they custom they tailor the design of the belts, tread compound, tread design, uh, right. Even all the of design. those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Change, you know, the depth can be changed. The inside and outside might be different. Might, right. This might be. This, it's not might be. This is a totally different tire than one comes on a GT3. So. How about a Cup Two that comes a on cup a, two, a Cup Two that's on a GT3 is not the same as this. So. Absolutely. Right. Speaking of all of that, uh, you talked about tread wear. Should we talk about that next? Uh, that's a. A great, a great subject, and I think we should. Okay. So let's talk about tread wear rating, which is a controversial subject. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> tread, tread wear rating can range all the way from zero to about six or seven hundred. For a, zero will be for a high, very high performance race tire that wears instantly, maybe a Formula One tire, <laughs> and maybe six or seven hundred for a economy tire that is hard compound and supposed to last a long time. Now. There is a method in determining the tread wear rating for tires that is consistent within companies, but not necessarily from one company and to the other. And it's done by the company. It's it's not, done. A lot of people think that's a government test. It's not. It's done by the tire company. Right. And because of that, there's variations from company to company. Mm -hmm. As an example. A perfect example here. This is a cup. Uh, we talked about it earlier. This is the Corvette Cup 2. Uh, this is, I happen to know this is a very soft compound when it was first, uh, uh, this tire was first developed for GM. Uh, this had the softest compound sold uh, on the cup tube. And that's part of this spec, GM spec that. Uh, but, uh, and this is rated at 180. Well, that's a pretty high rating for kind of a soft compound tire. And I, I, I can tell you from experience, 5,000 miles is all you're going to expect out of this with no racing. So, and, and then you compare that to that. Yeah. The, with, you can visually see this tire has a lot more tread, and this tire is actually rated at 140. Mm -hmm. So if you were comparing so the less tires, than less than this, yeah. so you, somebody would think, oh, this is going to wear out quicker than this tire. That's not the case. Not the case. Not the case. <laughs> the, this one will easily go 15,000 miles, where this one, even without racing, 5,000 is about it. Then you can also have, this is a real racing tire, 
uh, and this one treadwear is street legal, street legal, mm -hmm. but the racing tire not intended for street use at all. Never been on a production car, never will be. <laughs> yeah. So this tire is uh, uh, treadwear rating is 40. 40. Yeah, it doesn't last very long. But so that a perfect grip. example of an R compound tire. Exactly. Uh, this is not marked as an R compound. There is an R compound version of this. I've happened, my personal opinion is this probably should be called an R compound tire, but again, that, that's, a, that's a controversial fluid subject. So, yeah. so back to this one. Yeah, this one, this one is a tire that is very close uh, to our heart, very right. dear to our heart. Right. It's a, this is the Bridgestone RE040, uh, which came out in the early 2000s. And the first example we saw this tire uh, being installed on was a, a Lexus IS300. Right. Right. And uh, the first time we, we experienced the car, we were astonished mm -hmm. to the point where we called the manufacturer and asked them to certify that this is indeed the production tire. Right, we had some concerns that it, maybe that was kind of a, a ringer tire uh, because uh, it was the, the, the IS300 with this tire, which came from the, the manufacturers themselves with the certificate that it's uh, a, a perfectly production spec car. It was the first tire that had broken a certain barrier in our slalom tests, uh, time, I'm talking about time barrier. Uh, first sedan that ran in, in our tests under, under six seconds and that no, no sedan had ever done that before, so it kind of struck us as, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Yep. Uh, and, it, it could, you know, having, I was the driver, I could feel the grip. I said, well, this, uh, this is a very nice handling car, but it also sticks, it yep. also sticks, so. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great performance of the tire, and mm -hmm. uh, soon after that, we saw this tire pop up on other vehicles, such mm -hmm. as the Mazda Speed Protégé, right. and the Nissan 350Z, right? And, uh, yeah, I think so. Some, and yeah, and that started a certain trend. Right. And the other thing that stuck out was that we ended up with a second IS, <laughs> uh, just not not to check it, but to, as a as a car that we would also use in testing. And it didn't come with this tire. It came with a with a, a different brand, rate same tr uh, treadwear rating. Uh, and we ran that car in our slalom test as well, and it was quite a bit slower. So tires matter, and treadwear ratings really don't. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the point here. It's, you know, it's a little bit of fluidity, and uh, what you know, these these are not marked as a Lexus tire. Uh, in, in back then, it was not marked then, and neither was the other tire. So they weren't tuned specifically for that vehicle. Right. At least not marked that way, like this one is. Uh, so, um, George, where do you see trends like that going? Let's talk about that. Talking about trends in high-performance tires, on my right we have a road legal high-performance tire, on my left a race tire. Now this is a DOT approved tire, but you can tell that the tread design of the high-performance tire is getting to look like a race tire. The other thing that is changing is that the tread compounds keep getting better and they're providing astonishing levels of grip. The great news for us normal enthusiasts is that these tires are now available on uh, more affordable cars such as Mustang, Camaros, and even sedans like the Julia Cordifolio. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.